a woman's newspaper of the air. Everything from facts to fashions to household hints for Who's Your Housewife? Now here's Billy to tell you about today's show. We are going to have a custom car on the program today. We're also going to have a duet, and they're singing Shenandoah, one of my very favorite songs. And uh, also, we have Fred Farrell, who has a rather unusual preoccupation, I think. And right now, we're going to visit London via our London line, and it's something called a continuum, and this is an art display based entirely on motion. I uh, was a personality and talent, and we always did this because, you know, we weren't that great. But um, it was fun. It was fun. I had an interview show. I had probably one of the first of the um, on-the-air shopping things. I had a show called Swap Shop. And people would call in, and they'd say, I have this, and they'd bring things in the studio, and that was fun. And um, we did, you know, we got all the personalities who came through, all the celebrities who came through. We had Dick Van Dyke and his brother, Jerry, and we had Raquel Welch, and we had a photographer here at the time called Sal Calora, and um, Sal was really great. And I kidded him the last time I saw him. I said, yeah, I said, I remember when Raquel Welch was here. I said, all the pictures that he ever took, you know, he took pictures as we interviewed. And I said, they were all very nice, very fine. I said, when Raquel came, let's see, there was my hand. <laughs> Here was my foot. I think that was part of my hair. I mean, it was all Raquel. It was cute. But we did. We had a lot of really great, uh, and they were fun. You know, they were fun. Um, except that I was the last one. We did everything live. And I was the last one in town. Um, there were two other interview shows. And I got them around 3 o'clock. Well, if they got mad at the people who interviewed them before, then they were already mad by the time they got on my show. Oh, no. And Jerry Van Dyke came on. He wouldn't talk to me. He wouldn't, he wouldn't ahead of time, you know. And his manager said, well, you know, he's a little miffed. Everybody, it's, you, how's it feel to have a, a famous brother? And so I said, okay. So I'd ask him a question. He'd say, yeah. I'd ask him something else. He'd say, no. You know, that's death. You know right. that. Right. So I said, I have a story to tell you. And he said, okay. He couldn't have cared less. And I said, your dad was in, in town not too long ago. They had come in, his dad and, and Dick had come in for um, a car show of some kind. And I said, your dad, you know, they interviewed your dad. And one of the guys asked his dad, he said, how does it feel to have a famous son? And I said, your dad drew himself up. He was a real short, long guy. He said he, I said, he drew himself up and he said, which one? And it was, you know, it was a neat little story. And, and from then on, he said, that's my pop. And from then on, it was a good. But you did, you know, you had to, as I said, everything was live. And you right. really had to come up with these things that were, that's you know. That's an art. I mean, that is a true I art. loved interviewing. We've had several hypnotists on the program. And we've discussed hypnosis. But um, we have someone with us today who's actually going to demonstrate the art of uh, hypnotism. I'd like you to meet Fred Farrell. Now, what are you going to show us with Robin? What are we well, I haven't suggested anything. Uh, as of yet, mm -hmm. but uh, right now she is under hypnosis, and as you know, the subconscious mind doesn't have any censorship, so whatever suggestions I give to her, she will accept for fact. Mm -hmm. uh, you are still deep, deep asleep. You will not awaken until I tell you to awaken. I want you to straighten your right arm, straight. Straighten your fingers, stiff, rigid. Your right arm is becoming very stiff, very rigid. Rigid like an iron bar, like a piece of steel. Your right arm is stuck in this position. It's impossible to lower your arm. Try hard to lower your arm. You'll find that it's impossible. Your arm is stuck in this position. Now I'm going to snap my fingers. When I snap my fingers, your arm will fall in your lap and you will go much deeper sound or asleep. Thank you very much, Fred. It's been nice having you, and it's been nice having Robin, and I hope she watches herself on television tomorrow. Right after this message, we have a very beautiful song called Shenandoah by Paul Ernst and Bob Glaze in just a moment. I had forgotten that I sang on the Billy Boucher show. I ran camera on her show, and but I guess she was kind enough to let me sing on it, and she's a dear lady. And uh, Paul Ernst, who was also in our production department, I've forgotten 
he and I were a pretty good team. You know, I heard that tape and I just about died. I mean, it was, well, it was we were singing Shenandoah. The first thing I noticed, my hair was parted on the other side, which blew me away. Because I've been trying to part it on that side ever since. It won't work. It looked pretty good in that video. But, uh, but she was, Paul and I were in turtlenecks and I had a Nehru jacket on. The same jacket that I wore when Janie and I, on the cover of our Christmas album that we did in 68. Yeah, I mean, that was the big thing back then, those Nehru jackets. <laughs> Shenandoah, I long to hear you far away, you rolling river, come back across the rolling water, away, I'm bound away, I'm bound away. Shenandoah, I love your daughter, far away, you rolling river, I've crossed for her the rolling water, away, I'm bound away, I'm bound away. I'm bound away. across the wide. Oh, Shenandoah, I'm bound to leave you far away, you rolling river. I long to hear the rolling water away. When we'd have an idea, we could do it. And we did so many things. We had so many uh, really talented people. Bob Holbin was station manager at that time in Art Hook. And um, we did a thing called Who's Your Caravan? And we traveled all the small towns. And our crew would go in ahead of time and film, you know, in the afternoon or the day before. And then we'd go in with, like, a musical group and so on. And it was just getting acquainted with Who's Your Hometowns. And so we spotlighted those. And Joe Madden, who was also with it, just reminded me, yeah, in every gymnasium we played was at least 110 or 115 because we did it in the summer. But you could have, we had a, um, a plane out here in the back in the field, and I think it was called a gyroscope. It was, it was like a helicopter, but it, it was uh, only two people, one behind the other. And so, of course, I always wanted to do, you know, whatever was going on. So I got in and I said, it didn't go up like a helicopter. It was like a grasshopper. You went hop, hop hop up straight up and I <laughs> that was exciting <laughs> then we had a horse show in the back and I have a picture and I wish I'd brought it but anyway of uh, me and cowboy uh, paraphernalia and I was going to give you the picture and say this is BBCB BB before cowboy Bob <laughs> was <so> cute <laughs> but anyway it was fun it was really fun and Sammy Terry started right then when I did and um, just, you know, it was, well, you could do, as I said, you could do just about it. And then we, we sponsored the Miss Indianapolis pageant for several years and went up to Miss Indiana. And then I uh, chaperoned Miss Indiana to Atlantic City, which had never been done before because they have their own, you know, chaperones. But that happened to be Eileen Mary Smith, who came in second runner-up. Oh, wow. And um, that was fun. So you just, and I took junkets to, I was in Europe two or three times and, uh, you know, on the set of movies and in Hollywood. And I just, um, I have a picture of Sharon Tate and I right before she left us. Um, so it was, a, it was a fun time. I have a story to tell you. Six years ago this October, 
I started to work here at WTTV as Community Club Awards Director. And a year, about, oh, nine months later, eight months later, I went to work as account executive here at the station. And then about a year and a half later, I became women's director. And during this time, I've had a half hour show on the air. This is my sixth year at Channel 4. And um, things change, as all things should. And today is my last program for Channel 6. Channel 4. <laughs> That's one reason why I'm leaving. But anyway, I have enjoyed it very much. I've met some of the most wonderful people. It has left nothing but good memories for me, and I hope it's been the same for you. And I know the crew and the office hates to see me go. They, uh, they've been wanting me to stay. And in fact, they have said before, you really don't uh, have to leave, do you? And uh, I said, yes, you know, the time has come, and I really do have to leave. Uh, and they kept saying, no, no, don't, you know, because we all love you and we want you to stay here. And I uh, said, no, um, um, <clears throat> it's been a great six years. I have loved you and I hope you've loved me and watch for me someplace else. Okay, bye-bye. Uh -huh.